hey, don't worry, my little Buddha friend. It's all gonna be okay. Don't you worry. Well, this continues to be the worst episode of Black Mirror ever. Um, today, I'm here to talk to you about uh, anxiety. Maybe help you through uh, what you might be going through. Um, the last video I made was about despair and something that I was going through about three or four weeks ago. I recently got back from a meditation and yoga retreat and I figured out some stuff that has really helped me through it and hopefully helps you out too because it was my first time really experiencing despair, you know, like feeling terrible about the world, not just my direct situation, right? But like the world in general, this malaise. Um, so I, I found some great tools to help me out and Judging from the responses I got, it might help a lot of y'all out too. And there's been a lot of interest in some of the other videos I mentioned last time. Uh, people want to hear, like I mentioned that I'm not afraid of death uh, because I've had three full death experiences. So people want to see that video, I'll make one of those. I'll probably make a video about, uh, you know, conspiracy theories that are out there and how ridiculous they are and why you shouldn't listen to them. Um, I may make a few videos about anxiety because it's a big thing. It's tough to fit into just one. Um, and also like, you know, what's happening with the world? What's going to come out of the ashes? What kind of phoenix will come out of it? How do I think and hope society will change? Because obviously it's a very tenuous system that we have. If it can be dismantled so easily by a, by a virus, I do think something better will come out. I'm the eternal optimist. But it's going to be a rough ride for a while. And along with that rough ride will be anxiety. And uh, a lot of people just don't have a toolkit to deal with it. So that's what we're going to talk about this episode. So normally people come to the my YouTube channel or whatever, or my Facebook, because they want like photography, creative, artistic advice or things like this. This is not that kind of video. Um, I recently, If you want that kind of stuff, I took one of my best uh, tutorials about learning photography and beginning photography and made it free uh, for everybody. Uh, it's one of the things that's included with the Passport membership, but I made it free for everybody and people seem to love it. Uh, so far, Stu tells me it has over $50,000 worth of downloads, which is awesome. I'm so generous, I know. No, it's, it's honestly my pleasure to give it to you. You guys have changed my life and this is just something that's, that's great for you. You know, I think it will, um, as long as you're locked in, you might as well learn photography learn something creative because it's actually not unrelated to today's subject is getting rid of anxiety because while it's hard to teach, you know, a billion people to meditate, you can teach them creativity and creativity in its own way is a form of meditation and you can get to know yourself. And maybe I'm stealing my own thunder in, in this uh, dialectic, but really getting to know yourself internally and becoming comfortable with your sense of self or lack of sense of self by letting go of yourself, by letting go of your ego, by letting go of your identity. All of this stuff is achievable through the creative arts. And as you do that, anxiety just dissipates like fog in the morning. Okay. All right, let's get into it here. Let's talk more about anxiety and how to get rid of anxiety. By the way, I have a very extemporaneous way of speech. I'm very open-hearted and just let it flow. I hope it's not like overly bombastic or too solipsistic or I bloviate on too long, but I do eventually get to the point. And I hope that these little mini things I say along the way, these little connectoids between bigger ideas, I hope they help to connect things in your mind. So rather than, let's reframe it, okay? Let's, instead of saying like how to get rid of something negative, like how to get rid of anxiety. Let's frame it in a, a more positive light rather than like trying to get rid of something negative. Let's talk about how to embrace something positive. Let's, let's talk about like how you can be more open hearted and loving. Okay. Cause humans are much more likely to want and embrace something that they want in their lives. It's harder to get rid of stuff that you don't like, but seems to just kind of stick around, you know? Like a mother-in-law you can't get rid of. Uh, don't get me wrong, my mother-in-law is great. Bessie's fantastic. I can ask for a better mother-in-law. You cool in my book, Bessie? Anyway, so how do you how do you do this? Because anxiety really, if you think about it, it does lurk in the shadows. 
doesn't it? And if you let enough openness and love into your heart, there's so much light in there, there's really nowhere for anxiety to hide. There's no shadows left. And I know that sounds a bit hippie-ish or whatever. Yes, I've been to Burning Man the last 10 years in a row. Yes, I've gone way down this path, but it's actually true. I mean, you know it when I, you, you know it when I say it. And just maybe take me for an example, right? Like I've been going down this path for the last 15 years of getting to know myself through creativity, through a lot of reading, uh, through a lot of philosophy, a lot of meditation, a lot of practice, a lot of time by myself. And now I'm, you know, totes at peace with myself. Uh, I go through the whole day. I go through the whole week. Uh, nothing bothers me. I never get bothered by anything, which is great. Because I look around and I see people that are just bothered by just a few things or a lot, you know. Just constantly complaining about everything. And that must be a horrible way to be. In fact, if they're just if you're hearing what they're complaining about out loud, you can only imagine the maelstrom that's inside. You're just seeing the tip of the iceberg. That's no way to live, to go through life just being bothered and annoyed by everything. Um, and it's a very nice place to be. You know, what goes along with that, of course, is like not desiring anything. I don't desire anything. I don't desire stuff. You know, I'm happy with myself. I'm so grateful for everything in my life. Um, you know, I'm very loving. I'm, I'm just full of gratitude for all the good stuff that happens in my life. All of you that are in my life, I'm full of, full of gratitude because, you know, as you reach this state of egolessness or no self, it doesn't mean that you're an automaton, you're a robot, but actually you have so much energy to embrace the real things in life. And I didn't go down this path because I was trying to get rid of anxiety. I didn't, although if that is if that is a reason for you, like, I want to get rid of this anxiety. I'm tired of being stuck in my own head. These crazy monkeys are driving me nuts. How do I get rid of them? Well, a path is self-discovery, right? It's a long path. You're not going to figure it out by the end of this video, but this is a great time to begin this, this path. Okay. So how do you, Trey? All right, great. How do you find this openness and love in your world? Okay. I have one word for you. Scientology. I'm just kidding. Do not become a Scientologist. Um, that's just a joke. Probably not a good joke if you're a Scientologist. By the way, I do know some Scientologists and they're super nice people. But I'll tell you what, that is a fucked up system. Uh, you should watch this documentary called Going Clear. Holy shamoly. Anyway, off on a tangent way too early. Just trying to be funny. Keep it light. You know. Yeah. Hey, you got to make jokes in today's world. This is wild, right? Uh, oh, I haven't given you status report. This is day three of uh, uh, my uh, solitude, my solitary confinement. I'm here in uh, my cabin in New Zealand. Um, lockdown is for, level four lockdown is for the next four weeks. Uh, it could be longer, don't I? Um, I'm actually quite enjoying it. I'm trying to make one of these videos every two, three, four days to help you out. So anxiety is... A healthy thing it's a very natural thing okay that's one thing to recognize it's not a bad thing so many people frame it as a, a bad negative thing now taken to an extreme when it's caught in its own recursive spiral it can become a bad thing but remember, anxiety is a very natural reaction to life and a reason you have it is because your ancestors have survived this long anxiety is an incredible survival skill 99% of our ancestors lived in a life or death situation every day, you know, on the savanna in the Pleistocene period. You'd be walking through the tall grass and your heckles would be up. You'd be high anxiety because there could be a lion in the tall grass. So you're on high alert. So this is very natural. It helps you survive. So don't, don't think that anxiety is just a bad thing that bad people have with broken brains. It's not true. And these cycles, you can break out of these cycles. Um, I'm reminded of a little story that happened last week at this, uh, meditation retreat. We go on hikes every day and we have tall grass here in New Zealand, but in New Zealand, there's nothing that'll kill you. We don't have any bears or snakes or whatever. Nothing will kill you here. It's totally safe. So a lot of time Aussies come over here, people from Australia In Australia, everything will kill you. 
even other Aussies. All right, so people are on high alert. You don't go walking on the grass in Australia unless you have a death wish. And so even though all these Aussies were here walking around the grasses, they just couldn't get comfortable because the, the specter of fear of death was still there. Um, even though they know intellectually that nothing's gonna jump out of the grass and you know bite their Achilles heel and send venom into their body, it's not gonna happen. But that programming is really difficult to get rid of, especially if it's been instilled from a young age, right? If whatever your situation is, as you grew up, filled you with, with fear, um, you know, fear of not being a good person, fear of failure in school, fear of being fired at work, um, all these kind of fears, which only get reinforced when these things actually happen. And by the way, I do know that there are people out there that are experiencing extreme anxiety. There's different kinds of anxiety out there, right? There's people have anxiety where they cry just a significant part of the day because it's like doomsday. They've, they've lost their job, which is happening to a lot of people, which is terrible. They can't pay their bills. They're worried about feeding their kids. I mean, this is, this is real shit, right? It's real shit. And then there's moderate levels of anxiety where you just kind of worry like what's gonna happen next month and the next month about your income or your job situation or your family situation. It's good to think about these things as challenges, all right? Now, I'm gonna take a break and I'm gonna show you this clip from this video, which is incredibly disturbing. I shouldn't be showing it to you, but this is what happens when anxiety goes awry, all right? Um, well, I'll tell you something else about this video. This is from one of my favorite movies called Samsara. And the prequel to it is called Baraka. Maybe some of you heard of it. I'll link to it down below. And actually, Baraka is what got me into the arts, right? When I was uh, young, I snuck out of school and I went to go see this movie that I heard of called Baraka. And it changed my life, just sitting in this theater. I was the only one there, it's an empty theater, because it was sort of this art house movie. And I was completely transfixed. And even though I didn't become an artist then, I waited until I was in my mid thirties, every scene from that stuck with me. And it was always churning away in the back of my mind. And then when the sequel came out to it, Samsara, which I'm about to show you a clip from now, these scenes, they're just, they really, they really stick with you. All right, so here is a more extreme view of anxiety.
Hey, well, that, that was fun, wasn't it? Good times, something to lighten your heart. Uh, hopefully your anxiety has not gotten that bad, okay? If it's close to that bad, like I said in the last video, contact a psychotherapist. I'm not a psychotherapist. I'm just your creative buddy, just trying to give you some stepping stones here along the way. All right. But you do know, right, this is what hap can happen with anxiety. If you get caught in your own loop too much, right? Here's a few practical ideas to help you deal with your own anxiety. Every anxiety is different. Um, you know, oftentimes it is financial in nature or familial friend in nature. Either there's stresses from relationships or sickness. These are real anxieties. And you can't just say, oh, Trey, great. Having an open heart and being loving, that helps me a lot. How am I going to pay the bills? What am I going to do about my sick relative? Um, one thing that helps is to kind of reframe the idea of a, a problem as like a, a challenge or an opportunity. And although this might be a little bit of a stretch, but you can welcome challenges and opportunities into your life because it'll make you so much stronger for the next time around. People that don't deal with challenges and opportunities, they become quite weak and then they are completely useless in the face of upcoming challenges and opportunities. Yeah. So this reframing is good. For example, don't say like, I have a drinking problem. Say, I have a drinking opportunity. Okay, okay, I'm just making a joke there, but you see what I mean. Now, one step that's, that's great about this open-heartedness is that just acceptance of what is. Okay, so many people fight against what is actually happening right now because they don't want it to happen and they reject it. They complain about it, they fight against it. And that is the opposite of acceptance. So it's a big step. Acceptance is the same thing as surrender. And surrender sounds like a weakness, but it's really a strength when you can surrender to the reality that is, right? And then you can deal with what's in front of you. So acceptance is a giant and very, very brave step. So. I invite you to accept because that is the first step in making you quite strong. And yes, anxiety is inevitable. It'll take a while to get rid of this as you go down this path of opening up. And in the meantime, if you just can't get out of your own head, help other people. Okay. Just go out there and help other people in your life. That will help you get out of your head and make you more empathetic. And it'll just make you feel not just better about yourself, like I'm so great at helping people, but it'll just make you feel better about the state of everything, right? And you'll notice that as you go out and you're giving of yourself and you're giving of your time and your knowledge and whatever it is, right? Uh, you'll find people will be like, uh, you know, giving to you as well. So that's a good step. And here's a small little mental trick you can do every morning, all right? This helps tremendously. My friend uh, Miranda Guthrie told me this, she said, cancer survivor, super positive, loving person. And it's a little gratitude thing. It's a tiny little trick you can play on your brain that actually works. <clears throat> you know, when you wake up in the morning, you're kind of not totally with it, right? You're in this hinterland. You're in this veil between the fantasy world and the real world. It's often a great time to have good ideas. And the over-anxious, overthinking mind will immediately start thinking about problems you have to deal with for the day or issues or emails you have to answer, or bills you have to, whatever. In this little soft area, right? In this, uh, in this weird miasma, very simple, do this very simple trick. Just think of five things that you're grateful for, okay? And they give you the same five things as the previous day. They're like, oh, I've got a warm bed. Uh, I've got friends that love me. Uh, tonight I'm going to watch Netflix, um, I'm going to have a good meal today, uh, wh whatever. I can go, you know, wh whatever. Just think of five positive things that you're grateful for. Everyone can come up with five easily. And that tricks your brain into thinking in a positive way. The brain is super easy to trick, right? The mind is a great tool that you can, you can use, you can use for your own successes and optimism and, and love and all that stuff. But you gotta, gotta get it, kick it off in the right way. If you start out thinking about all the shit you gotta do today and all the problems in your life, it stays like that for a while, okay? So, so that's a simple trick um, anyone can do, all right? Um, you'll work through your own anxiety in your own way. Just know that 
it's different than despair. You know, previous video was about despair and we talked about it's like a, a season that will pass. Uh, it was never yours to own to begin with and you can just let it vibrate and pass through you. The important thing is not to despair in the despair. But despair as a thing will pass. People with anxiety will often replace one anxiety with the next. Right after you deal with these anxieties, there's new problems coming along. So yeah, you're back on the anxiety wagon. So that could be a lifelong thing. Um, slowly, you'll learn to get off of the train tracks of anxiety, all right? By following some of these steps and some of these resources I mentioned below. In the meantime, if you get caught in this anxiety loop, help other people, all right? Jump online, talk to your friends, get on the phone, have human connection. Get out of your own head by helping other people. Okay, that's a quick, easy fix as you work on these other things. So the path, of course, is to get to know yourself. Um, as you get to know yourself, um, this kind of stuff just kind of fades away because you don't take yourself seriously, you let go of your identity, you let go of your ego, and that ego and identity is really often the cause of a lot of anxiety because there's a story that you tell yourself. And if that story is not uh, reinforced by the world around you, then it causes you serious identity problems, right? Um, a lot of people, you know, they, they form their identity, their self, by a collection of groups that they are part of or the history with which they proclaim endlessly. Like, I went to Northwestern University. Uh, I have a job in finance. I am a fan of the Detroit... Lions, uh, whatever, right? These groups that you're part of, right? And you are part of these groups online. And some of these are good groups, some are maybe kind of groups. Um, but then you find yourself defending your group and your identity all the time, especially when another group comes to attack yours, you become really upset and you defend your identity because without your identity, of course, um, who are you? Well, this sounds nihilistic. Hopefully it doesn't. I think when you reach this point, you realize it's not nihilistic. But at your heart of hearts, you are nothing. And you are everything. You know, you, you are love. Um, now that I have completely dismantled myself, it doesn't mean I'm, you know, uh, nihilistic at all. It just means I have more energy to like love and be open and be kind and help other people. You know, that's pretty much my raison d'etre now. It's my modus operandi. And it's a great place to be. And it's an aspirational place to be. Um, I'll put links down below of some resources that you can look into after this. Uh, one main resource I would recommend is the Sam Harris meditation app. Just 10 minutes every day. It'll help get your mind into a good spot. All right. Let me also describe a passage from one of my favorite books, which is called The Untethered Soul by Michael Singer. And untethered soul, sometimes when you talk about soul, you get into like religious context, nothing to do with religion. Um, it's a great book. In fact, it's my favorite book that I recommend to people. It's the number one book I recommend when I do podcast interviews and stuff. Easy read, fun, light, interesting. And every chapter is a different thought experiment right? I love thought experiments because they give you a chance to uh, try something else out. It's like an episode of Black Mirror or something where you suspend disbelief for half an hour, an hour or two, and you enter another world where you can try out ideas that may not exist in your actual reality. So anyway, chapter one has this great idea, okay? Like, you know how you have this voice in your head, right? That often repeats itself and says the same kind of inane things over and over again. When this is a thought experiment, imagine that voice is not in your head, okay? Imagine there's like a, another version of you, okay? Like maybe a, you know, someone that kind of looks like you, but a little bit more annoying looking, okay? And um, instead of these thoughts coming out of your head, they're coming out of this person that's just sitting, behind, sitting beside you and they kind of follow you around all day. And this person says, oh, you know, you should, send some flowers to your mom. Uh, don't forget to get that gift. Uh, you need to pay the electric bill. Uh, you know, that striped shirt makes you look kind of fat. 
Um, your shoes are looking kind of shabby. You should mow the lawn. That outfit doesn't look very good on you. You should work out. Uh, don't forget to get flowers for your mom. Don't forget to pay all your bills. You got to mow the lawn. Like this person is saying this shit all the time, right? They're following you around, right? They follow you to the post office. They follow you to the grocery store and they won't shut up. And eventually you turn to them and you say, will you just shut the fuck up, right? And then also this person beside you is clearly somewhat insane. And why would you ever take advice from this person? You know, they're clearly, clearly nuts. And so then I think when you think about it like that, you think, okay, well, how can I shut this person up? Because they're annoying as shit, right? And they can send you into these, into these anxiety spirals. You know, like these Aussies that come here, this person beside them is always saying, watch out, there's a snake in the grass. There's probably a snake in the grass. You know, there's going to be a snake in the grass. Like, shut up. There's no, there's no snake in the grass. Nothing to be worried about. And as you go through some of these exercises, you begin to realize that you're not the thoughts in your head. You're the loving silence that gets to watch the thoughts go by. And you don't have to judge them. Okay. There's a couple of physical things I can recommend to get rid of stress too and anxiety. These are pretty simple. One is related to that. And one is if you can, I know not everyone can, but if you can get out and walk in nature every day, all right, it's almost impossible to have anxiety while walking through nature. In fact, I'm going to make a few videos here. I'm lucky enough to live in New Zealand, so I get to walk in beautiful places. I have this cool 360 camera here. It shoots in like 5K or something. And so I'm gonna take it on some walks with me um, just so you can see how beautiful nature is. And uh, you can kind of experience it with me. I may not talk much during, but you can just look at it and you can spin the camera around and you know, kind of experience nature if you're, if you're shut inside. Go full screen, uh, put on some earphones and just listen. Because as you walk through nature, it's actually a very natural thing to do. Humans, we're not supposed to, where's my phone? Where's my phone? I'm not sure. But humans aren't supposed to be staring at a phone all day or at a screen. That's not natural. And this causes a lot of anxiety because it's not a natural way for humans to live. If you're outside, doing work outside, carrying logs around, building a little stone hut or whatever, this is how humans are meant to be. It connects you with the earth. Do some gardening, anything you can do. Um, and related to that thought about you're not the thoughts in your head, as you go through, you can just notice trees that go by you and stuff, right? Think of them like thoughts. You never see a tree go by and think like, that's a shitty looking tree, you know? I heard a Zen monk say this, like you, you might be going through a forest, you know, and you see a tree and it's kind of tiny, it's kind of bent over, you know? It's not that majestic, but it's kind of bent over. You don't think it's an ugly tree. You look at it like, oh, you know, that tree didn't quite get enough light. You know, it's down here. It's doing its best. It's surviving. But you do it in sort of a non-judgy way. And you could do that with your thoughts. Let that be a, an analog about how to deal with your thoughts. The other physical thing that you can do that helps is, oh God, this is so obvious. I shouldn't even have to say it, but it is worth saying, is to eat healthy. All right. There is a lot of science that shows there's a gut mind connection. Okay. Your whole body is this one unit. All right. I think a lot of people think that your body is just this, you know, this vessel to carry your brain around. It's not, it's all totally connected. And, um, by eating healthy food, um, you can get this great, um, gut mind balance. And just by eating healthy, it, levels out your stress level a ton. Okay. A lot of veggies, um, you know, that here, okay. Here's another big secret. People don't talk about this and this again, it's going to sound hippie ish, but it's totally true. Some of you in your heart of hearts know this. Do you know what the secret ingredient to food is? It's love. All right. If love goes into the growing of it and the preparation of it and the delivery of it, like there's something in there that you can really feel vibrationally. It's, you can't really measure it scientifically, but you do feel it. I mean, think about like a home cooked meal uh, by, you know, your, a loving family um, compared to like hitting KFC at 11 PM, 
right? Yeah, sure, you get a little dopamine rush from the KFC in the first 20 minutes. Many of you are like, shit, you go like, oh, geez, this is good. Just kind of hangs around like a big cement tire. You know what I mean. Um, so do yourself a favor, right? You have one body, you might as well treat it well. And this is a great time during this little lockdown season to get to know your body well. Well, that's another video I'm going to do is talk about what my daily routine here is to, to stay healthy and uh, just what I do. What do I get up to all day long? Because I'm, I'm here by myself. Okay, so those are two physical things you can do. Walk, eat good. And the last thing is to get good sleep. Okay, um, a solid eight hours is super important. Another great book I'll recommend is Why We Sleep by Matthew Walker, a great audio book. Hey, if you're able to get out and walk, Listen to podcasts while you're out there. Listen to audiobooks. Why We Sleep by Matthew Walker is another good one because you know that if you don't get a good night's sleep, that all your juices don't really rebalance in the right way. And the next day, you just feel a little scattered, and that will not help with anxiety either. So there's are physical things you can do. Mentally, uh, work on the Sam Harris app. Work on not taking yourself too seriously. Um, little things you can do, little things you can notice along the way, or notice what bothers you as the day goes on and what annoys you. Um, it's not saying that it will immediately get rid of the bother and get rid of the annoyance, but it's good to at least notice it. So you're like, why does that, why does that bother me? It's obviously getting stuck on some egoic construct, some story that you're telling yourself, right? Um, a lot of people have not done any, and that's okay, it's understandable. A lot of people have not done any deep dive to get to know themselves or to dismantle their identity or build themselves up from a foundation. They adopt an identity or they adopt a set of rules from a group, right? Either a group that they had grow, grown up in or a group that they joined as a, as a young or older adult. You say like, oh, those rules seem good enough. I'm gonna do that. And then they, they role play and identity, they role play what they think that is supposed to be. And so they kind of assume an identity like they're role playing. And then, but it's, it's really just kind of um, a made up thing in a way. It's someone else's fiction that you have hoisted upon yourself. And that's fine, a lot of people do that, but it's a good thing to question. Like, why does this bother me? Does this bother me because it's something that I've done a deep dive on? Or is it like a rule that I've adopted that I haven't really done a deep dive on to see if it makes sense for me and my life. Okay, just notice what bothers you. Because a goal I believe to get to is to let nothing bother you. Because it frees up so much energy uh, to create and love and be kind and help other people. All that time you spend being bothered and annoyed, and like the world is not going according to the story that you told yourself. It's just wasted energy. Honestly, it's wasted energy. And that's time where you're stuck in a rut, you're stuck in a loop, and you're not able to spend any energy in a productive way uh, to help yourself, to help your friends, and to help the world. Honestly, the more work you do in knowing yourself, this is a goal to, like, to know thyself, the more work you do on that, uh, the better it is for you and your friends and your family and ultimately the world. So as you come to this understanding, um, it's good to share this stuff with the world. It's a long path. Look, I'm no Buddha, you know, at all. I'm a work in progress, but I have figured a lot of this stuff out. And my life is so much easier and beautiful than it used to be before I started going down this artistic and creative path. And I know it's, it's made me maybe a bit of an outlier and weird, and I know a lot of people don't understand me. And that's okay. You know, enough people do. And that's all right. That's all right. Okay. So as you begin to go down this path, remember it's going to be wild, wild. And, uh, but it'll be so rewarding because you're going to have this incredible foundation, um, for you. And you'll just have this, this incredible peace within and other people will see it and you'll be an inspiration for them. And then you'll look at other people that are completely unconscious or somewhat unconscious, and you're gonna just see that their world is just 
rot with um, they're just upset all the time and complaining and you think oh gosh those poor people and there is a path right there's a path to a better system and remember that path is Scientology it's not it's not Scientology all right guys well I hope you uh, hope you enjoyed that little trip okay I'll talk more about it later and um, I want to hear your thoughts. Thanks again for all the YouTube comments. I'm uh, reading them. I've never gotten this many comments on my videos, so I guess I guess I'm striking a nerve. Um, I'm here for you guys. Um, I love you. We're all in this together, right? I think this is a really good time to uh, reconnect. Uh, oh, by, by the way, I need to apologize for something I said on my last video. Um, <laughs> I made a little PSA at the end where I was talking about how terrible the government is at marketing because, you know, they're, they're saying like this uh, forced isolation is almost like a punishment. You know, they got police and drones outside your door to make sure that you're in there. Whereas if they were smart about it, they, they would market this as like, hey, self-isolation, think of it as a way to like isolate within yourself and get to know yourself and uh, work on yourself. Uh, what a great opportunity this is for, for all of us, right? Um, and so anyway, I made this somewhat glib comment that, that I, something bad about government, like the reason people work for government, the government is they can't get a job anywhere else. And that ruffled some feathers because I have fans or people that watch that work for the government. And they say, hey, that was me. Look, you know I'm not talking about you. Obviously, there are smart, clever people that work for the government. But you know what it's like. I think a lot of times good ideas and clever ideas from good meaning people in the government, it gets drowned out by government as a whole or by a, a committee, right? This is why you never see a statue of a committee. Um, so anyway, please don't take offense. I know there's good people in the government. I hope there's more than I think there are. And I hope some of these good ideas come out. Uh, hey, but in the meantime, it's up to the rest of us. To, uh, to band together. You can't, you can't depend on those guys, government so much, right? Just depend on yourselves and your friends and your family and this uh, greater network that we're all building together. Um, I'll make a video about what I think is going to come out of all this because I think it could be a great, uh, great awakening and a great chance. I'm incredibly bullish and optimistic on what will come out of all this, but it's going to be a rough few weeks. So, all right, hang in there, team, um, and I'll see you I'll see you soon. All right, bye. Love you guys.